Hey, it's Steve. Well, I'm working on installing track on the 2x4 foot end scale project layout, and I thought I'd do a video on the types of end scale track that are currently available. So today we're going to look at six different types of end scale track that you can buy and look at the advantages and disadvantages of each type. Let's take a look. Okay, so I have a bunch of end scale track and whoops, I guess this isn't end scale track. We'll put that aside for now. Six different types of end scale track here that we'll kind of walk through and look at the advantages and disadvantages of each kind. On the right hand side, I have two types of track with molded on roadbed. This is the Kato Unitrack here on the far right, and then I have Bachman Easy Track. The Kato Unitrack and Bachman Easy Track, while they both have molded on roadbeds, do have quite a few differences. Uh, first off, I'll snap these two sections of track together for each and we'll kind of compare them side by side. So both of these are code 80 track. Both of them have a similar overall height and profile, but you will notice that the Kato track does have smaller ties than the Bachman Easy track. However, the tie spacing on both is actually larger than prototypical. Just for comparison, this is a section of Atlas code 55 track that does have a prototypical North American tie size and spacing. And so you can see that's quite a bit different than either of these. The tie size is closer to prototypical on the Kato track, but the spacing is about twice what it should be. And the spacing is a little bit closer on the Bachman track, but still too far apart. And the ties are quite a bit larger than they should be. The molded on texture on the easy track is also larger than on the Kato unit track. Uh, not really a huge issue either way. One thing though you will notice is that the ties on the Kato track, they're actually part of the molding itself and then they're painted separately on there. So this is a very durable construction. Nothing is going to break off easily at all. Whereas with the Bachman track, it is actually a separate piece of Code 80 track, almost identical to the Atlas Code 80 track that is basically attached to this plastic roadbed material. So uh, it's a different type of construction, basically a separate track attached to the separate roadbed, everything kind of bonded together, and that's how you get the uh, the easy track. The biggest difference between these two though is the joiners. With the Kato unit track, the unit joiners which attach the track together also have the rail joiners embedded in them, and so both of them combine to produce a very good tight fit between the track sections. And when you take it apart, because the rail joiner is attached to this unit joiner body itself, you don't end up bending the rail joiner very much at all. So they actually can take a lot of repeated use and the joiners stay nice and tight and you get a continuous good connection between these track pieces after multiple uses. With the Bachman Easy Track, the rail joiners are separate pieces of metal and they can very easily get bent out of shape if you go side to side or up and down at all, you're going to bend and loosen these joiners. And so after just a couple uses, the connection becomes looser and looser. And, and over time, the electrical connection will degrade and eventually potentially fail. And so these are not as durable long-term. Now you can replace these rail joiners and you can crimp them back down to size so you can fix them, but it is something to watch out for. And also the connections between the track are not as strong as with the Kato Unitrack. Overall, I much prefer the Kato Unitrack over the Bachman Easy Track. Besides overall looking a little bit better, and having better connections, there is a lot more track available in the unit track lineup. Every length and radius curve you could possibly need is pretty much available with Kato unit track, plus they have multiple types of turnouts. And overall, it's a really great system for building your layout because there is so much availability. Uh, with the Bachman Easy Track, there's just not as many types of curves and straight pieces and turnouts and everything. And so overall, you're limited with what you can build with the easy track. It'll work fine for you, but you just don't have as much flexibility if you try to build a layout with the easy tracks. So overall, I would always recommend going with the unit track. It's gonna be more durable. You're gonna have better electrical connections between the track, and you have a lot more options in terms of track types, you know, curve radiuses, lengths, and everything else. And so it's a lot easier to customize your layout if you're gonna go with a sectional type track, if you go with the Kato unit track. Now, next up, we have all of our sort of standard track that does not include a roadbed. I have Atlas track here, 
and I have Pico track here. The Atlas track comes in two types, code 80, code 55. The code 80 rail here is the same as it is on these tracks here, but you just don't get a road bed. You just have the ties and the rail and everything else is similar, but you just don't have that road bed attached. But otherwise it's a very similar product. The Co-55 track on the other hand has smaller rails which are closer to prototypical size. Plus the ties are much finer as well. And they're closer to prototypical scale as well in terms of the size and the spacing. So it looks a lot better than the Code 80 track. Now there are some downsides to using the Code 55 rail. For one thing, the spikes that hold the rail to the ties are very small and fine. And so it is very easy to rip the rail off of the ties and damage it. And so it is essentially just a lot more delicate because of its finer appearance. The Code 80 track is much more durable. You're not gonna damage this very easily at all. It's gonna hold up to a lot of abuse. So if you have a portable layout that's gonna get knocked around a little bit, the Code 80 is a much better way to go. But if you have a permanent layout and you want it to look as realistic as possible, the Code 55 track is far and away your best option. And really, out of all of these, this is gonna be your best looking track by far. It's gonna look the best for photographs, everything else. And so besides the more delicate nature of it, this is really uh, a really nice track. Now on the Pico lineup, they have Code 80 and Code 55 track as well, but there is some you know, obvious differences between the Atlas track. So from the top down, they look essentially the same. This is a different type of turnout than this one. And so there are different sizes, but the ties themselves are essentially the same in terms of how they look, the spacing and everything else. No dramatic differences when looking from the top down. However, what, what Pico does for their Code 55 rail is they actually use Code 80 rail, but they embed it within the ties. So it's harder to tell here, but if you look from the edge on, on the Code 80 track, the ties are sitting on top of the rails and in the Code 55, they're embedded within the ties. So this has a couple of distinct advantages over the Atlas track because of how it's constructed. Because the rail is embedded within the ties, this track is extremely durable. The rail is held to the ties very, very, very solidly. It's not gonna easily tear off like on the Atlas Co-55 track. Further, because the track is embedded within the ties, they don't need to include tie spikes on the inside of the rail. And so this gives you better clearance. So with the Co-55 track from Atlas, if you have old equipment that was you know, like 30 years old and it had the large flanges on the wheels, those would basically ride on top of those spikes and the, it wouldn't run very well. And you'd have problems uh, with uh, either a lot of noise or a lot more derailment problems. Whereas you don't have that at all with the Pico Co-55 track. So if you have old equipment, this is really the best way to go if you want something that looks a little bit more realistic, but still doesn't require you to replace all the wheels on your old equipment. So this is really a nice option. The Pico track also has the best turnouts, I think, of any track lineup. They're actually more reliable than the Kato turnouts in general. They do snap back and forth and have a very solid connection when they go back and forth. And so you get good electrical conductivity, plus the way they're designed, you rarely get derailments on the Pico turnouts. They're, they, they run really, really well. So I do highly recommend the Pico turnouts if you are building a layout out of track that isn't the Kato track. The Kato number six turnouts are great. Their crossovers are great, but their number four turnouts tend to have a lot of problems. And so I would tend to avoid those, but their number six turnouts, their Y turnouts, their crossovers are still very reliable and I use them without any problems. But if you are going with track besides the Kato track, the Pico turnouts I think are more reliable than the Atlas turnouts. They don't look as realistic as the Atlas turnouts, but they do have, I think, a higher level of overall reliability. You can manually operate this very easily without having to have a switch machine attached to the side of it or underneath it. And so it makes it really handy in that regard as well. So overall, again, very durable with the Pico Co-55. You just don't have the tie spacing and the tie thickness that's appropriate for North American standards on the Pico track lineup. And so that is the one downside. It's not going to look quite as realistic as the Atlas track, but again, super durable and very reliable turnouts with the Pico lineup. So anyway, if I was ranking these tracks in, in terms of my favorites from most favorite to least favorite, in general, I do like using the Kata Unitrack the most just because it's very flexible, it's easy to use, it's super bulletproof, never have problems with it besides those number four turnouts, which are finicky. 
everything else is fantastic and it works really well. After that, my next favorite is the Pico Co 55 track. This is a great track lineup to use in terms of having great durability. You're not going to have a whole lot of problems. You don't have sectional track, you have flex track and you have turnouts. So uh, as long as you're fine working with flex track, the Pico track is great to use. It's very, very durable. After that, I think your next best option and the best option overall, if you want realism, is the Atlas Co 55. It's your most photogenic track that you're going to have available to you in N scale, I think. The Microengineering Co 55 track is also very good and it looks very similar as well. So that's another option as well. I just didn't have any available to me for this video, so I don't have it included here, but that is another option as well. Uh, if you don't want to go with the Co 55 track and Atlas, they do have Code 80, but I would recommend if you're going to go with the Atlas Code 80, you might as well just jump to the Pico Co 55. It's actually a little bit more realistic. It is a little bit more durable. And, you know, it's something that you should probably jump to if you're not going to uh, use the Atlas Co 55. Pico has Code 80 track, but you might as well use the Co 55 if you're going to go with Pico track. It looks a little bit better and there's not really any reason to use the Pico Code 80 track unless that's what you've already been using and you have a bunch of it and you want everything to connect together fine without any problems, then you can just buy more Code 80 track. But overall, if you're gonna go with Pico, get the 55 and not the Code 80, and it's gonna be a little bit more realistic looking for you. Lastly is the Bachman Easy track. I have a hard time ever recommending this. This track does have some issues with not being as durable. It doesn't look as realistic as other options. And so if you want the roadbed, get the Kato track. If you don't care about the roadbed, get the Pico track. That's kind of what I would say. Uh, there is another type of track that has roadbed called Tomix track. That looks similar to the unit track, but the roadbed is just not quite as high or wide. But overall, they have a similar lineup in terms of pieces and everything else. And it works pretty much the same way as the unit track, but it is not as easily available here in the US, but you can find that in other countries. But overall, this is a nice overview of the types of N-scale track that are available today. And so again, uh, a lot of different options to consider depending on what you're trying to do. If you're comfortable using flex track and using track without molded on roadbed, I think your Atlas Co 55 and your Pico Co 55 are your two best options. Uh, if you want the sectional track that has the roadbed, go with the Kato unit track and it's pretty bulletproof and it's always gonna work pretty well for you. But anyway, that's an overview of N-Scale Track and thanks for watching, bye.